speaker, guest speaker via Zoom. Pastor Greg's church, Gospel Church of Manila, just celebrated their 30th anniversary. Happy anniversary to you guys. We rejoice with you, Pastor Greg. Here to talk about the familiar story of the rich man and Lazarus, FCC brothers and sisters, let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity again to share God's word. So let me prepare my slides. So as mentioned earlier, you are now in your heaven series, and this is the second of your uh, messages. Uh, if I would like to uh, recall the announcements today, uh, do all roads lead to heaven? That was last week. Today is heaven for real. Next week will be as it is in heaven, and on the last Sunday would be, does heaven even matter? So I am excited on the topics that you have and the focus on heaven. Now, uh, what comes to mind when we use the expression, this is heaven? Perhaps uh, you have heard people when they see a beautiful place, they shout, this is heaven, or they ate something delicious, they also express the same words, or heard wonderful music, or uh, simply had a great massage. They say, this is heaven. So we attribute all of this as a foretaste of heaven, heaven on earth. But tonight, or today, this morning, we will not focus on this type of heaven. Uh, your church has been greatly involved with evangelism explosion, and you are familiar with the two diagnostic question. And let us all recall the two diagnostic question. Have you come to the place in your spiritual life where you know for certain that if you were to die today, you will go to heaven. And if you have been uh, going through the handling objections portion, you may encounter people who would say, but I don't believe in heaven. Now, what will you do? Uh, in our handling objection section, we are being taught about the judo technique when we talk about the judo technique we know that we use the strength of the opponent against himself so people who basically say i don't believe in heaven uh perhaps like what mentioned earlier uh, stephen hawking's an intellectual person uh, would say that uh it is just uh, something that is fairy tale uh, for people who are afraid of uh, uh, what happens after this life. So, is it really true that it is just fairy tale? So, we now approach it using their intellectual stance. So, we use the judo technique. How do we handle it? You may say, oh, you don't believe in heaven. Does that also mean that you don't believe in the Bible? Because the Bible teaches about heaven and the Bible also teaches about hell. If you don't believe in heaven, then you also do not believe the Bible. And of course, the person may say, yes, I don't believe there is heaven, there is hell. I don't believe even in the Bible. Now you would say, oh, is that what I really hear from you? Now let me clarify. Can you share with me what you know about 
how a person can go to heaven. And then the person would again say, I told you I don't believe in heaven. It is not what you believe that I am asking for. Rather, it is what you know about what the Bible is saying, how a person can go to heaven. And then the person would probably insist, but I don't believe the Bible. I don't believe heaven. Then you would say, uh, as a person who is very intellectual, I know that you will not uh, make a decision out of just uh, maybe the opinions of other people. You, you probably have made a decision regarding the reality of heaven or the non-existence of heaven. So what I'm trying to ask now is, what do you know about what the Bible is saying? Then maybe uh, the person would say, well, a person can go to heaven because of his good works. A person can go to heaven because of uh, obedience to the law. A person can go to heaven because of his religion. And then you will answer, you know, uh, based on your answer, I am surprised that you have already made a decision not to believe in heaven without even examining what is really the Bible trying to tell us about heaven. So is it okay if I share with you uh, how one can really go to heaven based on what the Bible is saying? Uh, then you move to what we normally say, uh, heaven is a free gift. It is not earned or deserved. So we are being trained that when we talk about heaven, we should smile. We should be excited. When we talk about hell, they say your normal face will do. So as we are talking about heaven this morning, for me, it is already 11 o'clock in the evening. I should maintain an excitement in my heart because we are talking about heaven. So, once again, it is our desire to discover what the Bible is trying to tell us about heaven. We already had the chance to do our scripture reading. And again, if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open to Luke 19, Luke 16 rather, 19 to 31. And uh, what we're going to learn from this passage as our uh, main principle would be Jesus and his word declares heaven is real. Jesus and his word declares heaven is real. So how will we know for sure that heaven is real? So again, uh, Jesus declares that heaven is for real. As I was meditating on the message tonight, today, uh, the thought came, how do we know that the world is a sphere and not a cube? Uh, for those who are engineers, we know that our planet is a sphere spear because all gravitational pull is equal wherever you are in the earth. And therefore, as long as you are standing in flat surface, you're able to stand straight. But uh, since we are Filipinos, we are familiar with the name Ferdinand Magellan. And Ferdinand Magellan is credited with being the first person in history to circumnavigate the earth. So because he was able to circumnavigate the earth, 
then he was able to prove that the earth is a sphere or round. Now, how about the existence of the moon? Uh, if you are of my age, perhaps you have encountered the name Neil Armstrong. In July 21 of 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. He stepped out of Apollo 11 lunar module and into the moon's surface as it was called the Sea of Tranquility. Now, why do I use all of this about the Earth being a spear or the, or, or the, the existence of the moon? So how do we know that heaven is for real? Well, we have to base it on the one who has been there. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the only person who can speak with authority and experience concerning the reality of heaven. And it is he who says in John chapter 3, verse 13, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. So if we say that heaven is real, it's because the one who have seen it, have experienced it, came to earth and declares to all of us that heaven is real. And part of his story is this story about uh, Lazarus and the rich man. So let us now re re read the story. Now a certain man was rich and dressed in purple cloth and fine linen, feasting sumptuously every day. And a certain poor man named Lazarus, covered with sore, lay at his gate and was longing to be filled with what? fell from the table of the rich man, but even the dogs came and licked his sores. Now it happened that the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side, and the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, he lifted up his eyes as he was in torment and saw Abraham from a distance and Lazarus at his side. Now from this portion, we can have a glimpse of what are the realities that even now we know these are realities. First would be the reality of death. According to Hebrews 9.27, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. So here we find the poor man died and then the rich man also died. So whatever be our economic standing, educational standing, or status in life, uh, we all know that death will one day knock on our lives. Recently, we remember Queen Elizabeth II, even though blessed with long life, 96 years, yet one day, September 8, death knocked on her door. So once again, we know that the reality of death is upon us, and it is even called our last enemy. The second reality would be the reality of eternal destination. The Bible tells us that now it happened that the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades he lifted up his eyes as he was in torment and saw Abraham 
from a distance and Lazarus at his side. Now, for our purpose, we will not discuss more on uh, Hades because the focus is about heaven. But when we think about the place where Lazarus was enjoying the comfort of the presence of Abraham's side or bosom, it would be of interest for us whether Abraham's bosom is heaven. According to my study, I discovered that Abraham's bosom is a place for Old Testament saints who died. That is where they wait. They enjoy uh, what they call the presence of being in Abraham's bosom. Now, what are they waiting? They're waiting for what we call the full atonement of our sins. In the Old Testament, their sins were atoned for through animal sacrifices. But we all know that animal sacrifices cannot fully atone for our sins or the sins of the Old Testament people. Now, in order for them to be fully atoned for, that is where the coming of our Lord Jesus uh, becomes significant. And according to the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians, when Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, and ascended and went back to heaven, he emptied what we call Abraham's bosom. He brought with him all Old Testament saints, and therefore they are now enjoying the place of heaven. That is why even the Apostle Paul says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So for us who are followers of our Lord Jesus, we don't go to Abraham's bosom when we die. We go to heaven to be with the Lord forever. Now, as we think about the place of heaven, I like the introduction earlier that truly there are so many scriptural passages that the Bible highlights about heaven. Now, we know that uh, our Lord Jesus, yes, mentioned about heaven, but what he really focused on would be how we could go to heaven, not necessarily emphasizing the place itself. People say that heaven is heaven not because of the pearly gates, not because of the uh, precious stones, not because of the gold pavement, not because of the presence of angels. Heaven is heaven because God is there. So the goal of our Lord Jesus is not for us to get excited of the place, but rather the goal is really that all of us go to heaven. Now, there are several emphasis of what heaven would look like, just like uh, tomorrow I will have a funeral service. And whenever I have a funeral service, I use uh, John chapter 14, because this is the time where, where Jesus was trying to comfort uh, the disciples who felt uh, uh, the emotions of Jesus telling them that I will soon die, I will soon be crucified. So Jesus addressed this emotional struggle of the disciples by saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me. 
so that where I am, you will be there also. So we all know that the, the Lord Jesus used this to emphasize that there is a place that Jesus is preparing. One pastor described this, if the whole earth has been made so beautiful in six days, from the time that Jesus said this to his disciples that I am going there to prepare a place for you, that means since he's, he has not yet returned, he has continually been preparing that place. If the whole earth is beautiful already, and he says it is good, very good, then what would be the picture of heaven? Perhaps we would truly be amazed by the beauty of heaven since he has been preparing it from the time he told this to his disciples until now. Now, of course, uh, Jesus mentions that heaven is the dwelling place of the Father, and we are going there. Uh, Jesus emphasizes that in that place, there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more uh, presence of sin. We will have our rewards given to us. So in all of this, we must embrace what Jesus said, that heaven is real. Heaven is indeed a real place. Why? Because Jesus came from heaven and he has experienced heaven. He came to earth to tell us about that place. So how can we grow in uh, fully embracing this truth about Jesus? First of all, first of all let us uh, get to know him more and more. Here at Gospel Church of Manila, as mentioned, that we celebrated our anniversary 38 years, we try to help people grow in their personal relationship with Jesus. And the first phase would be like what Jesus said, come and see. He told the disciples of John, come and see. Come and discover who I am, uh, uh, where I stay, what I do, and come to a personal conclusion that I am the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Now, if a person comes to a point where that, that they decide that Jesus is the Savior, the transformational indicator would be that that person will follow the Lord in the waters of baptism. So not only accepting Jesus as Savior and Lord, but declaring it publicly through waters of baptism. And then we try to help the person move from come and see to follow me. Follow me is where we try to develop the spiritual habits of quiet time, spiritual habits of worship, spiritual habits of tithing, spiritual habits of uh, studying God's word. And in all of this, uh, the person now moves to a point of consistent spiritual habits so that they can challenge other people to become followers of Jesus. So that is what we call our follow me stage. Now, for all of us, in order that we grow in our uh, understanding of who Jesus is, then let us uh, encounter him each day. Personal, relational, experiential, and transformational. Not only that, let us also meditate on the declarations of Jesus about heaven. Let us think about his words about heaven. And all the more, we could say, truly, because Jesus said it, I am uh, 
uh, I am already, uh, I believe it and it is settled. Because Jesus said it, it is already settled. Now, again, as uh, we think about the uh, main principle that we are studying today, Jesus and his word declares heaven is real. Now, let us try to watch this video and uh, think about this beautiful place that us uh, maybe desire to one day uh, see such beautiful place and say uh, how I wish that I could travel and enjoy the place. Now, my daughter, uh, Priscilla, uh, went to Mount Pinatubo. And uh, uh, let me go to the next slide. Uh, and, uh, uh, here's the next slide, Mount Pinatubo. Now, uh, I don't know if you have had the chance to see this place, but uh, my daughter, together with some friends, decided to trek an eight-hour walk moving to the crater of Mount Pinatubo. And when they reach the place, this is her picture of the crater of Mount Pinatubo. Uh, for us, uh, as parents, uh, we have not even had the chance to see this crater. We only see it in picture. Now, how can we be sure that this is the crater of Mount Pinatubo? It is because someone was able to go there and see the crater and take a picture. And I know... My daughter, uh, she did not just crop the picture and place her face there. She really went to the place and came back and declared, I saw the crater of Mount Pinatubo. Now, if that is how we maybe believe people who went to a place that perhaps we have not gone uh, to, then let us also put our trust on the words of Jesus that I am the one who is from heaven and I came to earth to declare to all of you that heaven is real. The second thing that uh, I would like to highlight would be God's word declares that heaven is real. As we move along with our story, we find, and he called out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he could dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am suffering pain in this flame. But Abraham said, child, remember that you receive your good thing during your life, and Lazarus likewise bad things. But now he's comforted here, but you are suffering pain. So again, what can we learn from this uh, passage? First would be uh, life. After this life, we will be conscious. Uh, we don't adhere to the doctrine of soul sleep, but rather uh, the Bible tells us that there is life after this life, and we will be conscious. That means either we will suffering, we will be suffering pain, or we will be enjoying comfort. Now, another would be, in addition to all these things, a great chasm has been established between us and you so that those who want to cross over from here 
to you are not able to do so, nor can they cross over from there to us. So what does this mean? We can cross over from one eternal destination to another. So what we are learning from this passage, there are only two eternal destinations, heaven or hell. There is no middle ground. Uh, my aunt uh, passed away at age 96. And the family is so religious that on the one uh, on the uh, first year of her anniversary, they decided to have prayers. And as I was listening to their prayers, they were praying for uh, my dead aunt to have the opportunity to move from where she is and be accepted to heaven. And they are asking God for mercy. So uh, in that religious uh, background, they believe that there is a middle ground. There is a purgatory. But as we look at the Bible, there are only two eternal destinations. And while we are here on earth, we are given the chance to make a decision whether to accept or reject the offer of God for eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is not through any religion. It is not through our good works. It is not through obedience to the law, but rather through faith in Jesus Christ alone. So we make decisions while we are still here alive on earth. Once we experience death, then our eternal destination is settled. So we can cross over uh, from one eternal destination to another. Another would be, then he said, then I ask you, Father, that you send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, so that the, he could warn them in order that they also should not come to this place of torment. So the rich man was very concerned about his brothers. And perhaps since they are brothers, he probably was presuming that they would also go to the place of torment. That's why in his concern, he said, please warn them that they may not go to this place of torment. Then Abraham said, but they have Moses and the prophets. They must listen to them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And here, Abraham said, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone rises from the dead. So what did I glean from this uh, portion? We are given God's word to declare that heaven is real. Subjective testimonies may not be effective. So when the Bible talks about we have uh, Moses. So when we talk about Moses, it talks about the five uh, books that Moses wrote. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, uh, Numbers. So uh, these are the five books of Moses. And when we talk about the prophets, it starts with Joshua, and then it ends with Malachi. So for Jesus during that time, he was saying that they have the word of God. And the word of God is enough to declare that heaven is real. Now that person, the rich man said, no, no. This, my brothers, will believe 
if someone rises from the dead and talks to them. In our time, in our generation, we can go to YouTube, uh, type near-death experiences, you type about people who went to heaven or even went to hell and came back and tell their stories. Some even are made into books. Some are even made into movies. Yes, these are subjective testimonies. These are their personal experiences. But even the Bible says, even if someone rises from the dead, they will not believe. And we all know that though there are so many testimonies telling that there is life after this life, there are still so many who do not believe about the reality of heaven. So the Bible tells us uh, you have Moses and the prophets. If they do not believe Moses and the prophets, they will not also, uh, they will not really believe that heaven is for real. So again, for all of us, as we think about God's word, uh, we know that the Apostle Paul said that I have been taken into the third heaven. We know that the Apostle John declared in the book of Revelations what he saw in Revelations chapter 4, 1 to 11. And these are declarations of the word. And what we should basically do is to study God's word and embrace God's word and believe that God's word is truly reliable and when we believe that the word of God is reliable, we can be at peace that heaven is truly real. Now, uh, when we think about uh, the word of God, as I mentioned, part of our uh, spiritual habits is to grow in our uh, understanding of the word. We use the discovery Bible study method and we try to help people become self-feeders it has been said that 80 percent of church goers do not do their personal quiet time and i do not know the spirituality of each one but i would like to challenge all of us who are here in zoom and those who are listening in person uh, do you have a personal time to study God's word? And if not, uh, it is not too late to start to hear, to read, to study, to memorize, to meditate, and apply God's word. So uh, I hope that just like we at Gospel Church of Manila, it was it is our goal that Starting this September until December, we would like to help everyone have the personal habit of devotions so that they may discover more of who God is. Remember, the Bible says, man shall not eat by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from his mouth. It is not for the church's sake. It is for our personal spiritual growth so uh, i hope that if we would want to have a good grip that heaven is real then let us read god's word let us study god's word and then of course not only that we meditate on what jesus declared about heaven let us also study what the other authors of the bible declares about heaven and the more we have a good grip on what they say about heaven, then we can truly be convinced that heaven is for real. So uh, God's word declares heaven 
is for real. And uh, when we think about our summary, Jesus and his word declares heaven is for real. Jesus said it. His word said it. It is settled in our hearts. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you love us so much. You gave your son, Jesus. He came from heaven to earth to declare that heaven is real. As we think about the messages of Jesus, he is more interested in showing to us how we can go to heaven. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that may you notice that all of us who are followers of Jesus, who believe your words, who, who take hold of your promise of heaven, that we would be serious in telling others that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one goes to the Father except through him. May people really feel that we are concerned about their eternal destination. May you hear our prayer that you would look upon with mercy on our loved ones, on our friends, on our relatives, that they too, O oh Lord, would encounter you and discover uh, your promise about eternal life. Yes, O oh Lord. It is our desire that we will populate heaven because we know that heaven is for real. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again and uh, God bless.